Ten and Busters is one of the most notable productions from the American writer, director, and animator LaShawn Thomas. The 2019 anime is based on a 2005 comic of the same title. The anime is produced by Studio Statelight of Macross and Symphogear fame, as well as U Metal Company, who went on to do Tokyo Mew Mew New. <laughs> Fans of the channel may know that I'm not a big fan of LaShawn, the man, and some of his work. Check out my other video on Canon Busto for more details there. I am, however, a big fan of his animation and character designs, particularly his black character designs, and this anime promises to essentially be a fantasy boondocks. Many of the reviews I've seen for Canon Busters either praise it unfairly for its strength in ethnic representation or attack it for pushing an assumed woke agenda. I decided to do a non-spoiler review to look at the anime as objectively as possible and determine if it's any good as just an anime. Hello everyone, welcome to Aniprop, let's get into it. There isn't anything remarkable about the plot or setting of this anime. Even the very first scene with the small animal being immediately eaten by the bigger animal, then that one gets eaten by an even bigger creature. This is a well used trope in westerns and even other animations to demonstrate the harshness of an environment. So from the very beginning, Canon Busters is signaling that you're not in for a new or revolutionary experience. The story meanders a lot as well with many episodes that could be counted as filler. You could canonically skip to episode 11 after watching episode 4 and not be at a narrative disadvantage. The plot centers around Sam and her search for the Prince of the Fallen Empire Robotico. She recruits Casey Turnbuckle and the immortal cowboy Spike, I mean Philly the Kid, to search for the Prince of Botico. Prince Kelpie acts as a MacGuffin in this series, you know the item that everyone is after kinda like the cube in Transformers 1 or whatever item in any of the poorly written Transformers films. The story doesn't go in depth with any of its themes, there are no big payoffs at the end. The story does just enough to integrate some cool characters and progress the plot from episode to episode, sometimes. Something I found weird about this show's narrative also is that it's like it couldn't decide what rating it was going for. It's rated R17+, plus, but yet a lot of the storytelling approach is reminiscent of a PG anime. I think it would have been cooler if it leaned into the darker elements like Philly's constant dying, enslavement of sentient robots body modifications like in cyberpunk edge runners among other more mature story elements I, th I think you get the point the narrative is the weakest part of this shindig it gets a 5 out of 10 the characters like the plot rely heavily on tropes too the main character is basically Spike from Cowboy Bebop, just way less interesting, way less smart, and way more dead. Philly the Kid at the start of the series is morally ambiguous, immortal, and lacking in hygiene. At the end of the series, he is morally ambiguous, immortal, and lacking in hygiene. The point I'm trying to make is that he does not partake in any form of character development. The story tries to hint at some revenge against Botica driving Philly, but it hints poorly, like a teenage girl to her first crush. They use assumed flashbacks with an Instagram filter over it, so we know that it's the past, to try to show us Philly's history and hint at his motivations. This applies across the board actually, all of the characters are kinda two-dimensional and lack any meaningful development. 
Casey Turnbuckle has a few developmental episodes where they face existential crisis, but it doesn't feel like it changes anything. Nine is an aged, retired samurai that the anime hints at having an amazing background lore, but they never really explore it. Nine even shows up in the ending arc with absolutely no explanation. He literally showed up because there was some beer to drink. This was the same excuse I used to show up to places in college. Somebody should make an anime about me instead. Sam, similar to Nine, has an interesting idea behind the character. She's the titular cannon buster. She has a defense mechanism to protect her friends such that she transforms into the cannon buster. She basically turns into a really big gun. Which is kinda cool. I'm with that. The problem is that this idea never becomes well developed enough. There isn't enough payoff with her character. The final episode leaves us with questions instead of answers, like for example Hey, what that mouth do? Philly's car transforms into a huge mech, a lot like the Saturday morning cartoon Megas XLR, which is great, but hardly impressive in an anime. Actually made me feel like I was watching a cartoon at times and not a big budget anime on Netflix, Crunchyroll or of course Pirate Bay if we are boycotting streaming services this week. The antagonist isn't very interesting either. I don't like his character design or even his motivations. Don't even remember what this guy is called. I apologize in advance for assuming his gender because even that is unclear. Where this anime excels is in the character design, with the best black character designs I've ever seen in anime. For comparison, this is how black people have been depicted in some anime in the past. In contrast, look at how Lashawn shows black people in his anime, night and day difference, I know. I said that this review would not give any regard to black representation but I have to because in its own way it's revolutionary and refreshing. How the hell did animators get away with this before? The characters feel real. Hilda here is a soldier with vitiligo, fairly commonly occurring but it's the first time I've seen this depicted in an anime and her design is beautiful with lots of cosplay potential. The character design for Sam is also interesting, taking a black spin on the blonde princess aesthetic. This look is impressively pulled off. There are just a few examples but in general the character designs are good and let down by the lack of character development. In total the characters come busting through with a 7 out of 10. During the final arc the animation quality takes a large leap with Sakuga moments coming every few minutes. Even the general frame rate seems increased. To be fair also, the CGI quality in this anime is pretty high given general anime industry standards. XRM and Berserk 2016 makes this look like the Mona Lisa. The standard animation quality is nothing great however, and I could tell you that before watching the show just by looking at the studios involved. I've watched several anime from Satellite. They are not known for action animation. I remember watching an anime spin-off of Haruhi Suzumiya done by Satellite and falling asleep several times before making it to the end. Both these studios produce drama and slice of life anime that are not heavily dependent on animation quality. I would say that the studio selection did not help with the quality of the final product. Given the subject matter, this anime needed Madhouse, Mappo, Trigger or even Studio Orange if they leaned into the CGI approach. The animation overall is passable, I give it a 6 out of 10. The audio and voice acting is pretty decent. Interestingly, I preferred the Japanese dub to the English dub. 
The OP is amazing and some of the best I've heard, giving me serious Afro vibes. Kinda like the original Bleach OP. That's elite company to be in, my boy. Beyond the banger OP, the soundtrack and the audio design otherwise are pretty average and non spectacular. Just like the animation quality, the sound design makes a big step up in the last two episodes. The backing music for these episodes are memorable and interesting. Makes me wonder why they didn't go this hard earlier in the show. The audio and sound design gets an 8 out of 10. Averaging out everything, this anime gets a 6.5 out of 10, which I think is about how I felt watching it. Very mid. I do recommend a watch, but it's not amazing in any area. While being groundbreaking with the character designs, it doesn't do much with them, so we can call that wasted potential. The show ends in a manner that would lead fans to expect a second season. Not sure if that's on the cards. I'll be making a follow up video about season 2. Thanks for watching to the end. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.